Uh, yes, the next speaker uh, in this session is uh, Nicolas. Uh, uh, he's a developer advocate at, at uh, Typeform, and he is going to talk us about upgrading uh, their webhooks to be first class citizens of their ecosystem. Yes. Uh, so let's see if it's working. All right. Um, all right. Seems like I have issues with um, showing my screen. Can you hear me well? Otherwise, uh, I can hear you well. Yes. Uh... All right. I think I have I have a solution for screen. Um... Are you using Chrome? Yes. Um, yes, I'm using Chrome, but um, that's strange. So we are uh, having uh, or trying to solve some uh, technical uh, difficulties here. Uh, hopefully they will be solved, fixed in soon. So we're uh, all right. Do you see me and the slides? Yes. Now you have a fancy way uh, of presenting uh, your screen. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we'll see how that works. Okay. Uh, so uh, the stage is yours. Awesome. All right. All right. Cool. Uh, well, thank you so much for the introduction. Uh, very happy to be here. I wish we were able to meet uh, in Helsinki all together uh, in person. I had such a good time. Uh, last time I was in Finland for API Days Tempere, so that was a couple of years ago. Um, but I'm really looking uh, forward for this for this conference. Um, today I'm here to share a bit of our experience, uh, what we had at Typeform, uh, doing uh, some stuff with webhooks. Uh, I'm a developer advocate at Typeform. I take care of the our developer community and making sure uh, that our partner ecosystem is also uh, really well suited to build on top of our uh, APIs. So if you are not really familiar with Typeform, uh, let me give you a quick introduction. Um, this is our uh, regular experience. This is the experience we're known for. Uh, we are uh, building a custom customer experience platform where people can uh, interact in a conversational way. Uh, we started with forms. Uh, we now adding videos. And uh, we are also providing uh, a way for uh, customers and companies to have a better, uh, meaningful interactions. But we are faced with uh, one problem as uh, people were interacting with our things. Um, they were not interested to leave the data on type form. We are not providing the best tool for analysis. We are not the best as this. We're good at data collection, but we uh, are not the main destination when it comes to uh, do the analysis and uh, work with the data that you have collected. So our users were looking to uh, get the data out into another platform. This was our, our main issue. And if we think about um, us as technologists, uh, we usually come up with a solution and say, oh, let's uh, let's give them an API and that will be it. Uh, and that makes me think about of, of Marie Antoinette, uh, where people were asking bread outside and we're giving them brioche instead. 
so this is definitely not uh, the experience that people were looking for. Uh, an API was not really fulfilling the needs that they had because an API was not giving them the real-time experience they wanted to build. Uh, they were interested to connect things as they were happening on Typeform. So someone submits uh, questions to a form, someone um, is uh, leaving their contact details, something has to happen in real time, get to connect it to other apps. Also, if you ask, and we saw this in the previous call uh, talk, uh, when we talk about no code and we talk about people that are uh, dealing with APIs that might not be at the same level of uh, complexity and technology as other developers, um, they needed an easy way to get connected. If you connect with an API, there's always a, a lot of burden around the authentication, a lot of things around um, having your own servers available and, and things around this. So uh, the API was not the solution. And this is where uh, the webhook came to solution. Um, and this is exactly how we started. We started from the webhook. Uh, building first the, the webhook interface for people to connect with Typeform. If you're uh, not familiar with webhook, uh, I think we can make a, a natural analogy on, on what it is and uh, what is out there in the world that looks like a webhook. And I don't know where the word comes from, but I, I, I can't imagine it comes from the spider web and the interaction that they have. Um, if you don't know how a spider uh, feeds themselves on, on their web, they're usually hanging around uh, but they are just waiting for a notification that there's food that has been catched on the web. Um, so what it will happen is like there's a fly, there's a bug that pass by, get catched by the web, and it will just vibrate. And that will be enough of a notification for the spider to come and have a, a beautiful, amazing feast. So um, this is what we do with Webhook. We'll let you know when something happened. Uh, don't have to ask us all the time. It's like, hey, are we there yet? Are we there yet? Uh, do you have new responses? Is this something new that has happened? Uh, you don't have to do all the pulling. The webhook will come to you and be like, hey, I have a new information for you. Come pick it up and do something about it. Um, so it's it's a, it's a we'll call you back thing uh, instead of like, oh yeah, keep calling me and I will let you know if something comes. Um, the good thing about integrating with webhook as a company, when you're like a, an API provider, a technology provider, uh, you get the chance to be part of an ecosystem. Um, by building this block first, uh, you get to integrate with all the different low-code and no-code solutions that are out there. And this is just a list of the connectors, uh, things that are connect things uh, that connect apps together. So we, we talked about Zapier earlier. Uh, there are many other solutions around this, but because you have Webhook as a functionality of your app, suddenly you can tap into this market and suddenly you can become compatible with all those different apps and all the builders that are there building uh, other integrations. There are a variety of solutions, and this is a lot of startups. Uh, people are a bit more advanced, but imagine in the enterprise market, they also have their own solution through uh, MuleSoft, Cold Element, and others. Uh, there are even uh, some open source solutions listed. So uh, the possibilities are endless, and they all start from this webhook thing where uh, get notified when something happens. Once you integrate Webhook and you offer Webhook as a, as a functionality and a, and a feature on your app, you also lower the barrier of entries for people to connect with your stuff. Um, even the people that are not really tax savvy, they can create easily their own function. Uh, we saw this through the growing adoption of serverless functions. So now it has become easier through apps like Glitch, through standard library, to Lambda, to Google Functions, to just host a little piece of code that will just like retrieve the data from the webhook and uh, do something with it. Is it storing in a database? Is it sending an email? Uh, you name it, there are many possibilities, but it's as simple as just a really small piece of code. It doesn't have to be too complex. Uh, so you're making yourself more available to this new type of users and uh, you're embracing also um, uh, people that are just getting started into technology. So if I had one recommendation uh, around the API strategy um, is to start with Webhook. Uh, if you can, uh, this will help you uh, grow and grow the company, grow the outreach of the company, grow the usage of the tool uh, beyond what would be a user base if you were just opening an API. Uh, the API is really for developers, developers, and developers. While you open the, the webhook, you get to tap another different market and talk to so many different other people. 
was uh, we open our tool for uh, webhook, our experience was not the best. Um, so I want to share some tips of some stuff we've done on how to build a better experience for developers and uh, something that you can apply on your own developer experience as well for your own tools. The first thing we did and uh, is to send some uh, consistent events. So for a while, as we were uh, sending events every time a form was submitted, um, we were not sending the data in the same order all the time. So the question one was not the first thing that people were seeing. The question two was nowhere, uh, no, not always at the same place. Um, so it was hard for people to build uh, their backend and the, the thing that were response, responding to it. So we made sure <laughs> that if you send the same data twice on a type form, the webhook shape will be the same. Uh, so developers could trust us and uh, use it as a, uh, in their app. Another thing that we, we've we did, um, and that's something uh, that helped a lot of our uh, developers with the uh, integration, is to test the webhook. So when they get started, uh, when they create a new webhook, attach it to a form, uh, and they don't want to fill up their form to find if the data is already there and if it's relevant for them, uh, we gave them a button to try the payload. With this, we're just sticking the shape of their form. We are mocking the payload that will usually be submitted with like some mocking data and they can already get started and we can check like this that the webhook is correctly connected as well um, so they directly have an instant feedback before doing any work on uh putting dummy data on their side uh it's working we get to connect with their uh webhook uh, url Another thing that we've done on the improvement, um, as you are a developer and you're gonna spend a lot of time in this interface, uh, we thought it was interesting for you to be able to see what was sent by us um, and uh, see if you had received the same thing on the other side. Um, and this is what we do here uh, in this uh, screen where we show you the payload that was sent. Uh, we show you what we sent and we, send, we show you what we have received from you as well. So you can inspect um, both sides of the connection and see uh, if there is anything that had happened in between and if there is anything that is missing. In the same, in the same screen, uh, we'll also give you a way to go back into history. Uh, like this, uh, if something is broken, if you see that there is a record that hasn't been sent to your uh, server or that hasn't been triggering uh, other workflows, well, you can go back to it and see where that has it fail. Uh, is that a question that you haven't taken care of? Is that uh, an edge case that you haven't thought about? Uh, and you can go back in in, um, in time, see where it failed, and uh, eventually re-deliver it. So uh, triggering, again, the same webhook without having to ask the user to, um, to send the same data. This is something we borrowed from uh, GitHub. Uh, they had this re-deliver button for a while. And this is really helpful for our developers that integrate with our solution because um, some forms could be really long and could have a lot of intricate questions. Um, and so it can take a long time to fill up this data. If they had to go through this every time they had made a change on their webhook, uh, taking care of uh, the pillow that we're sending them, um, they will spend hours doing this. So we give them this button. So they just submit the data once like a normal user and they can re-deliver it retry it as many times as they want. Um, this is a great thing for the uh, developer experience. And this is one of the features that people like the most uh, and thank us for this. So if you do something with Webhook, I really encourage you to um, integrate a similar feature. Sometimes, not all the time, uh, it may happen that the webhooks are not delivered properly. Uh, the server on the user side is not responding. Uh, they're uh, having an error. It's not available. Uh, there are many reasons for a webhook delivery to fail. But it's on you as an API provider to tell them uh, that you're going to try your best to deliver this event and deliver this payload. Um, so I recommend, as uh, you're an API provider, this is two examples of what Shopify and Stripe are doing, um, to be very explicit in your documentation and say, OK, we understand that uh, sometimes you may not be available, but we'll do our best and we'll retry uh, to send this back. 
and we'll retry a number of times. You get to define how, how many times you want to retry. You get to define in the period of time you want to retry. Uh, but at least the developer will know that uh, they get a second chance and a second opportunity. And in the end, if it's not delivered, well, you've tried your best, and it's and, and um, it's a bit their fault if it hasn't uh, been delivered and they couldn't receive it. Uh, and again, if you had give them the possibility to re-deliver later, uh, there's still a way for them to to make this happen later on. Um, something that I find really interesting, and we haven't adopted, but uh, something that I think uh, could make a better uh, developer experience around Webhook is notifications. So this is an example of Nihilus uh, that sent me sent me a notification because uh, one of my Webhook was failing. So Nihilus is an API that connects to your email, uh, IMAP, SMTP, uh, and uh, do some stuff in your inbox. And I just give it a try, make a small hack, and then forgot about it. And the server that I was uh, using uh, went down because it was just a temporary server. And immediately, as they were trying to send me things on this webhook, after a couple of failures, they sent me an email. I was like, hey, by the way, we tried to connect with you, uh, but it didn't work. Um, so is there anything that's happening? Just letting you know that uh, you should take care of this issue. Um, Twilio is doing something similar as well. So you get to connect with the, the developers and you get to tell them uh, when something is failing and uh, get their attention. Um, I think this is this is a good way to um, to get people uh, aware of what's going on with their webhook connection. Another thing that's uh, becoming a standard now is signing webhooks. So a webhook, what it is, is actually just a URL available somewhere on your server on a, on the cloud function, on the Lambda function, and it's pretty easy to uh, find the URL at the end. Uh, people can guess it or find it somewhere else. Uh, but if they send data to it, you want to be sure that this data is the data you were expecting. Um, if you make a webhook that waits for data from Typeform, uh, you don't want this webhook to react to any other source uh, than the Typeform uh, servers. So a way to do this, and this is an example on the Slack um, apps, is to sign the payload and uh, make the developer to um, verify the signature and making sure like this that it comes from the right source. This has become a standard here in, uh, in Slack, in GitHub. We're doing this on Typeform, and uh, this uh, this is something you, you should do on yourself as well, uh, protecting the users and making sure that uh, uh, they don't get spam and uh, abused. Another thing on, on security challenge um, that that I've seen, um, it's something that Twitch is doing, so it's it's probably a bit harder to, to build, uh, but it's also an interesting way of, of doing uh, verification for webhooks. So what they do once you you set up a webhook on Twitch um, they will send you a challenge um, to this URL. And they will say, OK, this is um, a post request. And the challenge is a random piece of string. Just send it back to me, send it back to Twitch, and we'll verify that you own this URL. And uh, this is the proper webhook that you want to send data to. So it's a two-step process, and you only have to do it once. And then after afterwards, you are um, you are authenticated as like this is your own webhook, uh, and it works well. I think it will be a bit cumbersome for you to do it as a provider. It might be a bit cumbersome to explain this to your users as well. But at least you're guaranteed that this is uh, what they intended to do, and this is the URL where they wanted to send the data to. Something that worked really well for us and uh, once we were opening our partner ecosystem through all the different apps that I showed you earlier, it was to offer a webhook API. A webhook API is an API that lets developers create webhooks on users' behalf through OAuth. What it means is that once you're like a Zapier, um, someone authenticate on their Typeform account, you want to create this webhook connection so Zapier gets notified every time there's a new submission on a type form. They need an API for this. They need an API to say, OK, now let's create a webhook connection to this form automatically to Zapier. If they were not doing this, um, a lot of the people were doing this earlier uh, without this API it was a, a three pages long of text of go to your uh, type form, click the create webhook. There, 
get a URL, paste this URL, um, and there are so many chances for failure. By offering an API, you make the experience easier for your customers, uh, you automate the whole process for your developers, and you guarantee that it's a smoother onboarding for them. So this is something that uh, definitely uh, encourage you all to do. Uh, add the corresponding scope on your OS and uh, let them uh, connect webhooks and eventually look at deliveries and making sure that everything has been delivered properly. Some other things that we've seen is uh, we saw that people had many other workflows that uh, were connected to one form. Um, so it's great if you are letting the users have more than one webhook per resource or per apps that they're connecting to your platform. Uh, like this, if in one thing they want to send an email and uh, trigger an email, that will work. But if they on the side they want to send it to the database, they can do that as well. Uh, you give them more freedom, and uh, I think they will they will thank you for this. Um, you let them connect with many other apps, and um, you let them uh, send the proper data and the proper events to to the to the proper webhooks. And that connects to, um, yes, exactly. So what we said, uh, each webhook gets specialized. It lets you build more complex workflow, more integrations. Um, it lets you also build a namespace for integration. So an integration with Zapier, an integration with MailChimp, they will have their own namespace and reserve this webhook for them um, specifically. And that connects to another thing um, that's, uh, providing more events. As you're going to build more complex workflows, as people are going to try to uh, connect with more apps, they might be interested to more thing than just the basic event that you have thought about. So for now, for Typeform, for example, we only send you one event when a form has been submitted. But we can send you eventually many other um, many other type of events on the webhook. When a new form has been created, when a form has been deleted, when a form has been changed, when uh, someone was added as a collaborator to your workspace. There are many events in your app that could be interesting to trigger automations and workflows. So think about all the different part of your app that could be open through webhooks. Um, that will enable innovation around your app. Um, this is an example with GitHub. Um, you can... Uh, pretty much listen to everything that's happening on a repo, on an organization, on a user account, uh, and be notified in real time when something happens there, uh, and create all your automations. And um, if you want to go beyond, uh, if you want to go uh, a bit further, and that's not something we do, but that's something I wish we were doing, um, in your SDKs, in the libraries that you are offering to your developers, maybe it could be interesting to add a webhook handler uh, so the job of your developers that are integrating with your webhooks are uh, easier. They can uh, quickly, through just like calling the SDK, uh, sign and uh, decode the signature to make sure that it's coming from you. They can extract the data uh, in an easier manner uh, than going through the whole JSON. Um, that could save some time, and that can ease also the developer experience. I haven't seen a lot of other... Uh, companies doing this, uh, but uh, I will say this is a, a direction to explore. Um, as we, we talked earlier uh, about the serverless and the different functions that uh, were uh, lowering the barrier of entry, but um, I wanted to, to, to finish up with an idea on the function as a service. Will this be the future of webhooks? Uh, mainly because we see a lot of companies, uh, and this is just a few, uh, that are now offering natively in their app a function system. So Twilio now has a function system. Netlify has functions. Um, PubNub has functions. All the stuffs have functions. So does it mean that you don't have to connect those apps into webhooks anymore and you just build the logic directly into those functions? Uh, that could be interesting. And there was a project um, called Extend uh, made by O0 that was hoping to provide this and as an infrastructure as a, an open source project for others to build. So if you wanted to host your own functions um, as an API provider, uh, you could do that uh, through this app. Um, and then if you look at standard library of Glitch, they are in the middle providing also for you as an API provider, a way to uh, provision an a small app for you developers um, and uh, let them hack on your webhooks very quickly. So uh, there's definitely something happening in this space and uh, a way for uh, you to connect to developer tools easily. All right, so to wrap up, 
Um, three three things to 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 have in mind uh, if you are dealing with your API strategy uh, right now. I will say build your webhooks first. That should be the first. Uh, piece of block you're, you're building for your for your developers. Uh, try to spend some time in the uh, developer experience uh, around this. There are so many things that you can provide to your developers uh, to make their life easier. Uh, we saw an uptick of adoption after we uh, we change our, our experience around this. Uh, and look at how you can um, extend this to serverless uh, and native functions into your app. All right, I think I think that's it for me. If you have any question, uh, let's do it here, or we can do that later on this video ask. Um, and if you haven't tried video ask, uh, this is on your product, and we're also getting started just with webhooks on this. Yes, thank you, uh, Nicolas, for uh, for the talk. It was very interesting to see in one place how you you collected uh, all the best practices. Uh, around webhooks, and uh, uh, it, it was an entertaining uh, uh, talk. So we are a bit late on on time. Uh, there haven't been that many questions uh, asked on the on the channel, but uh, I, I will have some questions uh, uh, at the final Q and A session. So thanks a okay. lot for uh, uh, for the talk and uh, uh, stay around. You can leave now the the backstage and uh, right. join later. Cool. See. You. Thanks. See you. Thank you.